Hi, my name is Diego Garcia Bolido. I'm a senior researcher here at the South Australian Museum and associate professor at the University of Adelaide, and I'm a paleobiologist. I look at life in the past. What we have in this gallery, the Ediacaran Gallery, is basically the best fossils of anywhere in the planet that represent those complex multicellular organisms that became quite prevalent about 555 million years ago. And what we have behind me is a fossilized seafloor. That seafloor, those sands with the ripples, very shallow water, trapped a community of organisms when they were still alive and trapped them and actually made a snap of what that seafloor, that ocean, looked like. Here we've got about 150 Dickinsonia costata. They seem to be a community of juvenile specimens that had settled this area before it got buried. These Dickinsonia costata were capable of moving. We know that because we find some of them that have left footprints behind. And they are the cousins of what was the largest organism in the Ediacaran, Dickinsonia rex. And let's go and see him. This is the largest organism from the Ediacaran anywhere in the planet. And it's about a meter long by about 50 centimeters wide, but it was very, very thin. What surprises us from all the fossils from the Ediacaran is that not even these big ones have any bite marks in them. They would have been sitting ducks. They would have been like a steak at the bottom of the seafloor. That's very surprising, especially because this changes radically when we move from the Ediacaran 555 million years ago to the Cayman after the Cayman explosion about 540 million years ago when animals became as prevalent as they have been since then. We've left the Diacron and we've arrived in the Cambrian. We're looking at the marine environment about 510 million years ago. By this time, we've got most of the animal groups we see today, including the arthropods. They're very, very common at the time, just like they are today. And its most common representative, which had a hard exoskeleton, are the trilobites. And these were capable of moving, they're capable of burrowing in the sediment, they're capable, some of the smaller ones, swimming in the water column. So we see that the organisms are now capable of moving in many, many environments. These organisms were probably just feeding from sediment uh, with organic material in it, but we have something that is quite special, something that defines the arrival of animals, that is predation. Let's look at animal acaris. Predation is very important, and it means that you're capturing prey and feeding from it. In the case here on the left, we've got Animalocaris canadensis. It's got very sharp, stout spines in its appendages, and these were used for grasping the prey and feeding in the, uh, through the oral cone. However, we also have another cousin of Animalocaris canadensis, which is Animalocaris brixii, that had much finer spines. These were adapted to feeding from the plankton living in the, uh, in the sea column. And these types of organisms are showing us that the diversity is much larger than we previously thought. And this is not the end of the story. There's a lot of these older organisms still to be found in Emu Bay Shale in Kangaroo Island and many other places around the world. So the Cambrian and the Ediacaran still have a lot to show us. Thank you for watching.